Welcome back to Access Houston on 97.9 The Box. Good Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth, welcoming uh, two first-timers uh, on the program. They are a part of Impulse Group Houston. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, the president, uh, DeAndre Moore, and the vice president, Ian Haddock. Hi, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Well, did, did I say it? it is Ian, right? It is Ian. You said uh, it right. Uh, and, and that is DeAndre, right? I, I know you're DeAndre. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're okay. right. No, I only say that because Ian was like, I hope you can read my hand right. Oh. And I'm looking. <laughs> right. looking no, nah, you, you did well. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Um, so, Impulse Group. So, I understand it's an international group of volunteers um, in the LGBT. Q-I-A. I believe that's what I learned. Uh, all of that. All of that. All of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it is, uh, it's a group of volunteers. Um, t- tell us about Impulse Group uh, Houston in, in more detail. Sure. So um, Impulse Group, the United, the international organization overall, started back in 2009 uh, by a gentleman by the name of Jose Ramos, which is our United president. He's over, He's the president of all chapters. He's that name everything. sounds so familiar. Doesn't that just roll to the tongue like Jose <laughs> Ramos? Like it just, I don't know. There must be somebody else named Jose maybe. I don't know. But it's a big name for us for sure. Um, Jose and a group of his friends were sitting in their kitchen um, just discussing, I think I believe about another friend who had just got diagnosed um, with HIV and they wanted to figure out a way in which they can impact the community um, on a level in which could be or you can go meet people where they are in different mm-hmm. settings. You know, mm-hmm. most organizations, most nonprofits have have to go in there. It's so formal and there's so many avenues in which they can go about, but they wanted to come up with an innovative way in which they could impact our communities. And so he and his group of friends came up with this idea of this organization that was a social movement um, that was that was that could go out into the community and create these really extravagant events that people would want to come to. Um, and still provide some form of information about testing, sexual health, um, and things of that nature. And so he partnered, he reached out to Michael Weinstein, who is the CEO of AIDS Healthcare Foundation. And for those who don't know, AIDS Healthcare Care Foundation is one of the world's largest nonprofits, um, generating over $1 billion last year um, in revenue to go out into our communities. And Jose, I mean, uh, uh, Michael Weinstein loved the idea. Um, they got together, and then that's when Impulse Group came about. And here we are. Um, almost 10 years later, and now we're up to 21 chapters all over the world. Wow. From Bangkok, Vietnam, Guadalajara, New Delhi, uh, Mexico City, Puerto Vallarta, and now 11 chapters domestically, Houston being the newest one to start. Oh, that's what's up. That was going to be my next question. When did the Houston chapter launch? This is actually the launch. Like, this is oh, what we're this preparing is it. for. This is, okay. yeah. uh, we, we've, <laughs> done some, we've done some things already. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did a fashion show in February, uh, but this is actually going to be our launch. That's why we're here to kind of, like, talk about and promote the launch that's coming up. Well, the launch is happening uh, this weekend, this coming weekend, mm-hmm. August the 3rd uh, through the 5th. Mm-hmm. And you guys have got, you got two major events. They sound... Uh, real interesting. So let's talk about uh, first uh, that is happening. Barbershop conversations. Yes, that yes, is right up yes. my driveway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right up my alley. I love. I so, love going to the barbershop. Yeah, I talk think, about it all. I think exactly. Uh, I think I think black men uh, or people of color in general. Um, that's like a safe haven for men. You know, we go there. Uh, it's probably the second most sacred space after church. Mm-hmm. You know, we can talk about whatever we want to. Uh, we can laugh. We can joke. We find out. We actually gossip. Women probably don't know we gossip in the barbershop. Come on, let's keep it real. Men, men, gossip, men, men gossip, gossip more than, more than women, women. To be honest. <laughs> we talking about it. I, I Come on, men DeAndre. Let's, let's, I mean, women. let's. <laughs> it's true. That's real. Like, yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah. Really. We sit around and we gossip, but. The other side to that is uh, bringing your other intersection in or my other intersection in, which is a queer person, right? And so when you're a black queer person, um, a lot of times the barbershop can be a very toxic place Mm -hmm. um, because as men... um, in the barbershop, you're supposed to bring just that level of masculinity. Absolutely. So, or or this new term, this toxic masculinity toxic mas- that yes. may be hyper masculinity. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh huh. And so you come into this space, and it can be um, traumatic um, in in some ways because we got to go to the barbershop. You got to get your hair cut. You definitely don't want to go to. You can't just say, you know, I'm going to go to another. A barbershop that's not um, black because you got to get your hair cut by a black man. Um, and so it can be a very, it could be a very 
unfortunate experience. And so what we wanted to do was create a dialogue around that. So we did a documentary uh, a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, we shot a documentary and it's being edited right now. And we're going to premiere it on um, at our event for Barbershop Conversation. Wow. And so <laughs> what is the document? I am intrigued Sorry. like a mug. <laughs> what um, in the documentary, what what is going on? Just conversations in the barbershop? Yeah, so um, our advocacy director, Reese Carraway, um, who came up with this idea um, some time ago when he brought it to us and said that this is what he wants to do as his first advocacy project, um, we realized that it tackled mental health, you know, because when, like you said, when we go into these barbershops, we have these conversations. Mm -hmm. And as a little kid growing up, when you're hearing things and you're hearing these these people that you look up to talk about, oh, that's that, that's gay, or you can't do this, or you can't do that, um, it becomes kind of confusing because it, on one part of you, you look up to these men and you somewhat want to be like them because they inspire you. You hear these conversations that they have. And then in another part, you feel as though you can't really be yourself, which leaves you confused. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And so for us, it was going into this space and having the conversations that we aren't used to having to break those barriers for other barbershops to be able to say, OK, maybe the way we're doing things needs to be restructured to make sure that everybody feels safe and welcome and, and to come in here. And mm -hmm. we can have these conversations. And it stemmed from his barber in particular, which he has real hood barber. You know, I've been <laughs> to O'Shea's barbershop, which is amazing. Um, yeah. And, and and in there, in that setting, what you would think going in that it's not okay to have these conversations, they have them. Yeah. They talk about, you know, they ask questions. People, when you get into these, when you start having those conversations, you realize regular black men are actually kind of intrigued. They want to know. They just yeah. don't know. And once you educate them about who we really are, it's like, Oh. We're really the same. Who you yeah. go to bed with is just different than yeah. who I go to bed with. Yeah. That's it. We, I mean, <laughs> I mean, at the core of it, we are we are men, so we're a lot yeah. more right. we're, different. We're just, uh, it's, it's, as yeah. I've always said, like <laughs> the game is still the same. It's, it's just different same. players. Yeah, absolutely, exactly. absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, right. And so, I mean, it, it does give you insight into because um, because O'Shea is in it, and he talks about kind of like how he's tried to shift the conversation, but we also cover. Um, kind of like what we look up to, like our relationships with our fathers and our families. Uh, we talk about what it looks like for us as community because the, the thing is toxic masculinity does not only involve heterosexual counterparts, right? Mm -hmm. um, gay people can have toxic masculinity too yeah. um, and ephemophobia and all those things. And so what Femophobia. Ephemophobia. Ephemophobia. Yeah. I have never heard that term. So ephemophobia is a fear of feminine people or feminine mm -hmm. men speci specifically. Wow. Yeah. And transphobia too, Trans because we even have a trans man on this, a part of this documentary. So it's straight mm -hmm. men, trans men, bi men, by and queer men. men. So wait, yeah, yeah please <laughs> let me slow down. <laughs> when you say a trans man, this is a uh, woman who, who has trans 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 to, to be, to be, to be a male. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. I think, yeah, we, we're used to seeing transgender Women. women right um, but a trans man a trans yeah. man yeah. fascinating yeah yeah it is you listen to access houston we're talking to deandre moore and ian haddock the president and vice president respectively of impulse group houston uh, they have got their launch for the houston chapter of impulse group uh, this wednesday i mean this wednesday this weekend excuse me <laughs> uh, august the third uh, through the fifth one major event that we were just talking about the barbershop conversations i am hella interested in, <laughs> in this because it it um i've been in a barbershop where uh, homosexuality has came up and you know it, it's a lot of that you know y'all already yeah, know what yeah, it's a lot yeah. of and in my mind with human beings period like the one that yells the loudest is the one mm. that is feared the most internally. Mm. They're the ones that's dealing with some internal uh, feelings and struggles. Mm. And that's why they're so, you know, want to be with the bullhorn about, you know, being gay and calling them the F word and, and all of that. And it's just like, but, you got some issues inside of you, bro. Because if you're good with yourself, yeah. like... It's not going to matter. It does not affect you. But there's something about what I do or what I have going on in my life that makes you, and like you said, internally struggling with something because you aren't either sure in yourself yeah. Yeah. or there's something that has happened to you that which you just don't want to you know, talk, talk about, about or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And I, that. Just wanna, yeah. I just want to make sure I add because 
I'm the banji one of the group. <laughs> Generally, those are the ones that we're not even interested in. in yeah. the first place. <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> right? it's true. <laughs> I think I did, that's another misconception that gay men are just out for everybody. We have standards. Yeah, <laughs> pretty Actually, high. I mean, if you if really you know high. if you if you if you recognize that most of us are stylists or we're working in the medical field or uh -huh. things and like that, like um, y'all got high standards. Yeah, we got high standards for everything. And a lot of times, most gay men have a lot. They feel we feel as though we have a lot to prove because yeah. for one, we have layers that are on top of us as a black man where I looked at as society as a whole as not being capable to, to reach certain levels in, in America and corporate America and things like this. That could be further from the truth, DeAndre, because in my experience in my, you know, 17, almost 18 years in this industry in radio, um, all of the gay men that I see got it going no. the F on. No, that's I not mean, Sam. they are... We They're have to killing. Go. Yeah, we have to. We think we feel as though we have to reach above and beyond everybody so that we can prove ourselves. Yeah, yeah. You listen to Accents Houston, uh, <laughs> DeAndre Moore, and Ian Haddock of Impulse Group Houston. So the next event that you're having, uh, this sounds very interesting, Soap <laughs> Huchella. Soap yeah. Huchella. That's going yeah, to be I mean, at Clay I mean, Day yeah. uh, nightclub. Uh, so is this, is, is this going to be a daytime event? Yeah, daytime event. Okay, pool, pool party. party. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Really, really big pool party. Um, okay. We're expecting anywhere between 800 to 1,000 people um, to be attending this event. Um, because, mind you, both of these events are completely free and mm -hmm. open to the public. Shut up. We're yeah. not charging. We are all about giving back to the community. At the club, too. And so, at yes. the club, too. And, and, and you might pop up and have some free drinks. Yeah. Oh. We're also giving away complimentary drinks, too, Yeah. to this event. You know. So, I love the word free. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 I yes, love yes, the word free. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> well, well, that's what's up. And so, and of course, with this, all of it is to, of course, educate and promote, I'm sure, a healthier uh, lifestyle, mm -hmm. a healthier mm -hmm. um, sexual lifestyle and, right. and all that and bringing awareness to uh, HIV and AIDS and, and, and all of that. Because, because what we've realized is that um, although there, there have been a lot of great things that happen and we're not trying to reinvent the wheel as it relates to public health as it relates to uh community service what we do know is that a lot of what has happened hasn't always worked mm -hmm. and that the climate is changing you know uh, we finally have a generation of queer folk who are unafraid and unapologetic to be out uh and in that freedom comes a responsibility right and that responsibility unfortunately looks like a projection of one out of uh, two uh, black queer men uh, will get HIV uh, in their lifetime. That's the mm -hmm. projection as it stands, right? And so the responsibility we have and the freedom to be open and out is to educate, is to, is to do things on a grander scale and really invest in our community and give the messaging that says that we are with you and we are fighting for you. I love it. Big, and, big ups. Go ahead. You know, yeah, and then also I think that, like you said, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We've seen a lot of community organizations host panels, host you know, small community events, and it seems to me as though it's the same people always showing up. It's mm. still the same people who are already involved in the community. So how do we go out and reach the people who don't get to show up, who don't know about these other events? How do we get them attracted and involved in which we can reach the masses and make the largest impact on a larger scale that we can? Indeed. And so that's why it was important for us to have this type of event where we will have celebrity guests, where we will have a Coachella themed party um, where people are gonna be performing throughout the show. Um, we're able to give people free drinks, free swag, and a lot of just free stuff. At the same time, provide messaging around drug abuse, around stigma and mental health. That way people can leave away with something that just I love it. hits everything head on. And, and, and we can't, way to bring and we it can't home. forget that, you know, you know, this is Houston, so we are going to be hot. Be, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. So okay. We definitely have, you know, we have a performer coming in and, 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 and reenacting Beyonce's exact Coachella performance, which yeah. we cannot wait for everybody to see. Yeah. Yeah. It's Huchella. Stop it. No, I'm so serious. I'm so serious. If you do not know who Trinity K. Bonet is, I highly advise you everybody look yeah. her up and look at her Beyonce mm -hmm. Coachella performance. The only She's going to do the Coachella performance. Can I tell yeah. you about that Coachella performance? <laughs> Ironically, that night, I had fell asleep and I had woke up. It was like yes. it was like 12.53 or something. <laughs> and I Because I woke up to go, to go pee. And then I grab my phone and I get on Twitter and I see... Beachella. And mm -hmm. I was like, what? And I touched on the hashtag. I was like, 
Oh snap! It's about to. <laughs> air, hold yes, on. Yes. Turn yes. on the smart TV. Put it on yes. the YouTube yes. uh, app and watch that entire thing. Soon as she turned around, Amazing. mesmerized from that walk on, and I was, I was blown away. I had that feeling. I, it was. Oh my God! I couldn't even. I can't even put it into words. Yeah. And then to see what I was feeling, how I was feeling, yeah. sitting Everybody on my couch yeah. in the in at four in the morning, <laughs> I get on social media. Everybody's tweeting and saying the same thing. Absolutely. I was like, "Geez, I, I experienced something great because history." That, yeah, because that was the blackity blackest black performance <laughs> yes. on the whitest white white international <laughs> stage. That was a yeah. she and everybody lived for it. Yeah, everybody was, lived for it. Oh my God, yeah. it was just I. I want to watch it again. I I, w I wish I could. Oh well, I you can. can. Yeah, so you make can. sure that you come back and talk to Tella. Yes, <laughs> That's yes. what's you up. You get the same. You get the same experience in person. And so, and that is going to be on. August the fourth, from two to eight p.m. Make okay, sure that so that's there. a Saturday. So uh, yes. August fourth. Okay, at Clay. And Clay make sure Day. that everybody goes and registers. It's completely free. We ask that everybody go and register at our website, SoapHouston.com. You can take a three D tour of the venue. You can purchase cabanas if you want a cabana, which comes with bottle service. Um, you can do just about anything from our website. Indeed. All right. DeAndre Moore, Ian Haddock, the president and vice president, respectively, of Impulse Group Houston. Thank y'all for coming on the program. This was fun. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so you much for, for having us. Us. Yes. And we Indeed. look forward to seeing everybody on August 3rd, 4th, and the 5th. No yeah. doubt. <laughs> and thank you for listening to Access Houston.